Well, prices increased. Hello, good evening. It's time for News Hour Live on GBC 24 and GTV. My name is Soyoko Kakutre. And my name is Akele Avo Ajaja. Thank you so much for joining us for the news. In the details, the new Patriotic Party MPP says it will embark on sustainable integrated infrastructure development programs should the party win the general election. Addressing the news conference in Accra, the chairman of the Infrastructure Committee of the NPP, Mr. Joe Gatti, said sectors such as railways, ports and harbors, water resources, housing and ICT will be improved and used as channels for job creation. A week after the new Patriotic Party, NPP, launched its manifesto, the Infrastructure Committee of the party has briefed journalists on its numerous development programs. The chairman of the Infrastructure Committee, Mr. Joe Gatti, said roads, railways, ports and harbors, and aviation system in the country would be efficiently upgraded. The western and eastern rail lines will be revamped. We shall also expand the railway net network from Kumasi to Paga. We shall build a Tema Akosombo rail line and tie it with the into a revised and expanded Volta big transport system. We shall continue the expansion of the Tema Harbour and the Takaradi Harbour will be extended to second D. A logistics centre will be developed in second D. With the private sector, we intend to construct two new harbours in Jamestown and Kitar and an inland port in Bupi. The Volta River will be developed into a major transportation artillery, artillery in connection with the private sector. We shall increase domestic air travel as part of our integrated transport system. We will achieve this through policies such as improving and, improving and increasing our air transport infrastructure generally, reducing the price of aviation fuel, and abolishing the 17.5% VAT on domestic airfares. He adds that the NPP will drill at least 25,000 boreholes and 300 small town water supply systems and then modernized antiquated water supply system in towns and cities. We shall construct storm drains in Accra and other cities to deal with recurring devastating floods. As a long-term and permanent solution, we shall establish a national hydrological authority. The authority shall plan, develop, maintain, protect and administer drainage and flood control measures. The authority shall be responsible for constant dredging and the sorting of our drains and waterways to ensure free flow of water. We shall offer tax incentives to local estate developers and producers of building materials. We shall also abolish the 5% VAT on real estate sales and work with identifiable groups such as the TUC, teachers, nurses, farmers to facilitate the construction of homes for their identifiable groups through provision of, among others, appropriate financing guarantees. We shall promote and develop the use of local material in the construction of homes. We shall facilitate the development of an active mortgage market to expand access of mortgage loans to Ghanaians. He emphasized that the party would conduct a comprehensive audit of uncompleted government projects throughout the country under the National Asset Protection Project. President John Mahama is on a four-day campaign tour of the Volta region at a rally at Bora No. 2 in the Krachi in Chumuru district. President Mahama said a bridge will be constructed over River Oti at Dambai to link the Krachi East and Krachi in Chumuru districts. NDC loyalists in the Krachi West and Krachi Jumuru districts waited for hours but patiently for President John Mahama and his campaign team. The team arrived at about 8 p.m. although the people had been at the rally ground since 2 p.m. During the wait, some of the people took the opportunity to do brisk business by selling food and NDC party paraphernalia. The crowd went wild when the president finally arrived. The Chonkera of Krachi traditional area, Nana Dasibre Kwame Bunja, welcomed the team and praised the NDC government for the development projects delivered to the area, including good roads, educational infrastructure, and improvement in health care. He appealed for the construction of a bridge to link the Krachi East and Krachi in Jumuru districts. 
In response, President Mahama said, plans are far advanced for such a project. The Media Foundation for West Africa has, in collaboration with the Electoral Commission, organized a forum for journalists in Tamale. Discussions centered on responsible reportage, processes and interventions for peaceful and credible elections. The forum provided a platform for journalists to interact with officers from the Electoral Commission and asked questions pertaining to electoral processes and all activities by the Electoral Commission ahead of the December polls. Elections predominantly is about information sharing. And when we talk about violence and peace and so on and so forth, it's all about making sure that our people have the right information. It's about information, but not just any kind of information. The truth, information that is credible and information that is accurate. The Executive Director of Media Foundation of West Africa, Suleiman Brahma, said the media has a role to play to ensure that regulations and guidelines on the electoral processes are disseminated to the electorate. The chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Madame Charlotte Say, explained reasons for why some presidential aspirants were disqualified. The reason why we're here today is because the media is a key partner to the Electoral Commission in the delivery of our mandate. When the media does not do this properly, all the other parties in the process suffer. And so it's very important to us that we spend time with the media, for the media to understand how important their role is, for the media to understand how important it is that they report on the elections accurately, for the media to understand that they need to take time themselves to learn the laws that undergird the process and the policies so that when politicians come and say things that are impossible, you can only know those things are impossible because you know the law. The National Bushfire Prevention Campaign has been launched in Kumasi. The campaign is re-emphasizing fire prevention and the protection of properties. The Ashanti Regional Minister, Mr. John Akon, appealed to the Ghana National Fire Service to collaborate with manufacturers and estate developers to design burglar-proof systems to facilitate escape in the event of a fire outbreak. Bush or wildfires remain one of their biggest challenges, especially to farmers and a threat not only to food security, but lives as well. Food and cash crop farms have been destroyed by bushfires caused largely by human error. Public education has therefore become crucial in preventing and minimizing the destruction of the ecology. Fire officials seek to create awareness on prevention of wildfires as well as domestic incidents which have in recent time claimed lives. It is for this reason that a National Home Fire Safety Certification Project, DAPT, Dungja, is being launched in the Ashanti region. The Ashanti Regional Minister, Mr. John Akon, was unhappy about the frequent loss of lives from fires. All those fires are created and caused by human beings. So if human beings decide to do what's right, the cost will reduce or eliminate the cost of human beings. So let's say what we are right, we are going to get closer to the institution and let's abide by the rules and regulations and the policies so that we we'll save lives, we we'll save property and save us. The Chief Fire Officer, Dr. Albert Brown Gazi, urged Ghanaians to change the attitude towards environmental conservation issues. The Chief Director at the Ministry of Interior, Mrs. Alid Anokusi, is calling for harsher penalties for breach of fire prevention and control laws. Mrs. Anokusi led the contingent to commission a newly constructed guard post and a reception named after the interior minister, Mr. Prosper Bani. The University of Mines and Technology at Takwa is waiting for approval from the National Council for Tertiary Education and the National Accreditation Board to begin a Bachelor of Science program in Renewable Energy Engineering. The university has also introduced programs to encourage more women into engineering. This year, 
The university admitted 542 freshmen and women to pursue a four-year program in mining, petroleum and allied engineering education. Out of this number, 459 are males, while 83 are females. In the area of postgraduate admission, 53 students have been admitted to pursue various programs leading to the award of Master of Science, Master of Philosophy and PhD degrees. Currently, the total students' enrollment at the university stands at 2,271. Admitting the new students, the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Kerry Samuel Kuma, advised the new students to lead morally upright and disciplined lives as they pursue their studies. He encouraged them to be enthusiastic about what they have set out to do and strive to achieve excellence at the end of their studies. The professor gave a stern warning that any student caught cheating in examinations, stealing, fighting or involved in occultism would receive an outright dismissal. He spoke about some new academic initiatives the university is coming up with. The Ministry of Finance is in the process of working with us to get the documents necessary to start a public-private partnership model on our new our proposed new campus to become a reality. And I'm also happy to inform us that our environmental monitoring laboratory project has received cabinet approval and will be going to Parliament uh, on Tuesday. The chiefs and people of Abra Chimpim traditional area in the Ahanta West District have held a derba to climax their annual kundum. The festival coincided with the golden jubilee of Awulai Kweku Atresu as the paramount chief of Jomoro traditional area. The chiefs and people of the Ebura Achimpim traditional area belong to the large group of Ahantas of the western region. Farming is the main economic activity. The celebration of Kundum is used to foster unity among the people and strengthen family ties. The event also offers the people the opportunity to map out strategies for the development of the area. In a welcome address, the chief of the area, Nana Kweku Mensa, called on citizens of the area who are living outside the country to come home regularly and help develop the area. He used the occasion to appeal to Ghanaians to let peace prevail in this year's election. Nana Kweku Mensa thanked the government for the reconstruction of Princess Town Road, as promised. He wants the Ebra Vocational Institute to be under the Ministry of Youth and Sports instead of the Ministry of Education, as is currently the case. We are going to trust the Regional Minister. I want to learn evaluation board and I say I cannot guess in painful with a name. Sir, I want to, when I say, problem be no honor. One share, no, yeah, I said, I want to man and I saw him as a super no. I want one second. I want to be when you develop one or mine. The Western Regional Minister, Mr. Paul Evans Edu, advised the people to continue to live in peace and unity and rally behind the government to continue to develop the country. You are watching News Are Live on GBC 24 and GTV. Hello, good evening and welcome. We bring you some business updates. I am Dorothy Ajumai. Fuel prices are up at the pump. Diesel has seen an increase of between 8 to 11 percent, depending on the retail outlet or filling station. Price of petrol has also seen an increase of between 3 to 5 percent. Goil is yet to increase prices. The current increases have been largely attributed to the sharp increases in crude oil prices on the international market. Oil prices increased from a record low of $41 a barrel to $51 after the oil cartel OPEC announced a reduction in supply. Moving on, Sunyani-based DKM 
Diamond Microfinance has commenced the payment of customer deposits to its clients as directed by the Bank of Ghana. The company opened its doors to the public following the lifting of a 120-day freeze on its operations and bank accounts by the Bank of Ghana. Over 70,000 customers have so far been validated to receive their lock-up cash. The payment process has been very peaceful as the security, the liquidator and management of JCB Bank put in place strong security measures at the premises of the bank where payments were being done. The payment process took place outside the bank premises while the monies were received in the bank. The bank is expected to end the entire process by 2nd November and will serve 500 customers each day. Customers of DKM were asked to present the photocopies of receipts and ID cards including the original copies for proper check by the representatives of the liquidator. Two special designated bankers were available in the bank serving the affected DKM customers. On the issue of payment system, GBC24 observed that the maximum payment to the affected customers is 3,500 Ghana cities irrespective of the amount owed by the company. Meanwhile, customers whose deposits are below 3,000 Ghana cities are expected to receive their entire savings. This, however, did not go down well with some customers. Izwi Loans has rolled out a new program dubbed the Izwi Job Clinic for students from the various tertiary institutions in the country. The purpose is to school the students on how to write an appropriate curriculum vitae CV and groom them on interviewing skills. According to Izwi Loans, the program forms part of its fifth anniversary celebration and also to equip the final year students for the job market. Easy Loans is a finance house that offers services such as savings, insurance, investment products, among others. The company offers loans to workers on the government payroll, such as teachers, nurses, civil servants, among others. The company currently clientele is in the excess of 80,000 workers and 150 employers, as well as over 500 sale agents. The job clinic saw students from the Accra Polytechnic and other tertiary institutions in Accra. A human resource professional, Mr. Kojo Vanez, revealed that writing a good curriculum vita CV is one of the challenge students must abreast themselves with when entering the job market. The idea of a CV is to, to give the employer a first hand information of who I intend to employ. So if I know who I intend to employ from a paper, with a summarized idea, then I can invite you. But then if your CV is not appropriate, it does not tell me what I need to know, then I'll not even invite you to come for the interview. According to the coordinator for the job clinic, Mr. Robert Kwesi Kumsen, most students find it difficult to get jobs because they do not prepare adequately for such occasions. We are in a business and uh, we've been employing people and when we conduct interviews, we get to know that there are huge gaps between uh, our expectations as employers and what is actually seen in the interview room. For instance, if somebody comes for interviews, when they are called for the interview, what they need to do is to read about the institution, be well abreast with the kind of institution they come in to be interviewed for. People come or candidates come and it's like they don't even have an idea as to whether they should have prepared on those grounds. According to Izui Loans, they intend to organize similar job clinics in Kumase, Koforidia, Ho, Takrade and Sunyane Polytechnics. You're watching News R and this is the business segment. Let's have the performance of the local currency on the Tabang market. Let's have the prices of gold, cocoa and light crude.
In insurance news tonight, the National Insurance Commission say the fund set aside to compensate third-party motor accident victim has started yielding positive results. According to the Commissioner for Insurance, Madame Lydia Laibabawa, the third party has three years to make claims after a vehicle is involved in an accident and whether the driver has a license or not, defect in the policy of vehicle is not licensed, the victim will be compensated. Motor insurance is compulsory in Ghana and it is to cover legal liability to third parties. So if you are in a vehicle and you are involved in an accident, uh, uh, the insurance company is supposed to compensate you or if you are knocked down or your property is damaged as long as you are the third party. But there are instances when the third party cannot access compensation from the insurance company, either because the driver was not licensed, the vehicle was not insured, or there was a defect. The insurance segment was brought to you by SIC Live. We have more news coming up. Please do stay. Well, welcome back to the news, and this is the health segment brought to you by FPAC. FPAC blows your pain away. The Accra Psychiatric Hospital has increased the fees for some of its services. According to authorities of the hospital, the new fees are expected to provide quality health care to the public. GBC 24 was at the hospital and find out, found out that the new charges have not been affected. Ghana's premier psychiatric hospital, the Accra Psychiatric Hospital, has been in the news for some time now for its challenges including inadequate logistics and shortages of essential medicine as part of measures to correct the situation. The hospital administration on Friday, October 14, 2016, resolved to review the charges for services it renders to the public with effect from Monday, October 17, 2016. Currently, a new patient hoping to access psychiatric care has to pay 40 Ghana cities for a folder. Previously, a patient paid 25 Ghana cities for the same folder. Also, new patients will be charged 30 Ghana cities for consultation instead of the previous figure of 10 Ghana cities. The hospital has also started charging fees for medical reports to courts, embassies, schools and for child assessment, among others. In the past, the said services attracted no charges. The increment, according to hospital officials, is to enable the facility to meet the high cost of essential non-medical consumables needed for the provision of uninterrupted care to patients. The move is also to supplement financial support from the government. But the number of patients visiting the Accra Psychiatric Hospital has not changed, in spite of the increase in service charges. Around 1.30 p.m., when GBC24 got there, 15 new cases, including two foreigners, had been recorded. Speaking of camera, some officials of the hospital said consumers ought to cooperate with the hospital in its efforts at ensuring the availability of essential materials needed for the smooth operation of the facility. Reporting for GBC 24, Gifty AJ, Accra. Also in the health segment, the First Lady, Mrs. Lodina Mahama, has presented assorted medical equipment to the Great Consolidated Diamond Limited Hospital at Akwitia and the Asamankesi Government Hospital at separate functions. She was accompanied by the Eastern Regional Minister, Mrs. Mavis Frimpongati. The donation was in response to a request made by the hospital administration to the Lodina Foundation to come to their aid. Although the hospital serves a large catchment area, inadequate staff capacity and infrastructure continue to be a challenge. The medical equipment included surgical beds, wheelchairs, baby's coat, boxes of gloves, strangers, sacks of mosquito nets, dressing kits and boxes of surgical equipment. 
Di akwetia hini, Osabari Makofi Boateng, commenders the government for ongoing development projects in the community. He appealed for the construction of a bridge for Akwetia Man. The Eastern Regional Minister, Mrs. Mavis Amafrim Pongati, thanked the First Lady for the support. In an address, the First Lady, Mrs. Lodina Mahama, called on all to join hands to help halt the problem of child labor and human trafficking in the country. She said parents should support their children to become responsible citizens instead of giving them out to be engaged in forced labor. Children, instead of being in school, find themselves engaged in farming, mining, fishing, and other adult occupations to make ends meet. This is not acceptable and informs my decision to collaborate with my Ivorian counterpart, Madam Dominic Watara, to fight against cross-border trafficking in children and the worst forms of child labor in our respective country. At a similar function at Asamankese in the West Achim municipality of the Eastern Region, the First Lady Mrs. Lodina Mahama said the Lodina Foundation would continue to support women and children through informal education and skills development. The Asamankese Hini Osabarima Edudaku and the administrator of the Asamankese Government Hospital, Mrs. Rita Aqua, were grateful to the Lodina Foundation for supporting the hospital. And that was Health, brought to you by FPAC. Hello, good evening. Time for some update from happenings in the world of sports. I'm Theophilus Sampa. The Ministry of Youth and Sports has given each member of the Black Maidens 1,000 US dollars as part of payments of their per diem after finishing at the quarterfinal stage of the ongoing FIFA Under-17 World Cup. The Public Relations Officer of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Mr. Otto Plaha, who confirmed this, said the remaining per diem will be paid next week. The per diem was $2,800, meaning the girls will get additional $1,800 as promised the next week. Also, the technical directors as well as management members also received $1,500. US The team, since arriving on Saturday morning, has been staying at the Marisex Hotel in Accra to receive their money. The news in that all of them have now departed the hotel and home by now. A project to mobilize supporters in Africa to chair on the five teams that will qualify for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia has been launched. The program is on the team Africa One Dream, One Team, One Mission. Youth Peace International is embarking on a campaign to get football fans in Africa to go and cheer their teams up to showcase a united front. The project has been dubbed Africa one dream, one team, one mission. At a media launch in Accra, the chairman of Absolute Peace International, API, Dr. Tony Orban, throws more light on the project. The A1DTM project hopes to create a support and fund base representing the entire continent to rally behind the African countries that will participate in the 2018 tournament. This support and fund base is intended to be transnational, pan-African, and transcend beyond national and geographic borders. Our support will be to rally behind all the African teams till the last team drops or reaches the finals and wins the World Cup. The organizers are hoping the initiative will bring the African continent together for a common goal to motivate an African team to reach the final. Ghana has joined the world in celebrating the founder of the Special Olympics, Eunice Kennedy River in Accra. The month of October is dedicated worldwide to celebrating the life of the founder who championed the cause of persons living with intellectual disabilities in sports. 
The month of October is set aside globally to celebrate the life of the founder of Special Olympics, Eunice Kennedy Shriver. Special Olympics is the biggest sporting event in the world that is dedicated to persons with intellectual disabilities. Here in Accra, the day was marked with various activities by students from the Jowulu Special School. It was to create awareness on the need for parents and society at large not to neglect persons with intellectual disabilities. A board member of Special Olympics Ghana, Nana Reku Ampim, appealed to individuals and organizations to support children with intellectual disabilities. The celebration of her legacy is to inspire and impact her indomitable spirit on current and emerging leaders to be architects of change with passion and purpose towards all people living with intellectual disabilities. We want to take the opportunity to appeal to the government and corporate organizations to come to the aid of the Special Olympics Ghana to enable us to send the children to the games in Oslo. Ghana will be sending 12 athletes for next year's Special Olympic Games scheduled for Austria in March 2017. They will soon begin campaign to keep them in top shape for the tournament. The Special Olympics Winter Games is a 10-day tournament open to all countries around the globe and fully participated by people with intellectual disabilities. Ghana will be participating in the floor games which is similar to hockey. In July last year, four athletes from Ghana participated in the athletics competition during the Special Olympics Summer Games held in the United States and they returned home with four silver medals. The expectations are that the athletes selected for the Special Olympics Winter Games will focus on their training to enable them return home with medals. <laughs> That's all for sports. Hello, good evening. Time for some art news. My name is Valerie Danso. Folklore legend Kweku Ananse has been featured in a peace song about the two major political parties here in Ghana. The character shares the wish for the country to remain peaceful. Ago, ago. What true phobia sending dancing here to Kwe. But my witnesses are the four winds. Kwekwana says I Love My Ghana is an animated music video by Tuffman Music and Parables Animation. I love my Ghana, I love my Ghana, I love my Ghana, I love my Ghana. So go tell my mama and Nana I love my Ghana. So go tell my mama and Nana I love my Ghana. Is a musician who has built his art around an indigenous musical instrument called the kushka. I love my Ghana to the bone. You more have one of your no mini bones. To the fighting and the back biting could have stopped the rising of the nation, you know. I love my Ghana. I love my Ghana. I love my Ghana, I love my Ghana. So go tell my Hama and Nana, I love my Ghana. So go tell my Hama and Nana, I love my Ghana. See, I love the Zongos and I love Obango. When I'm in the go slow, I love Abodo. I'm down here in Miami, see they call it for me. Any kid now we don't want no one, no one, no one, no one in Ghana. All we need is peace, yeah, I in Ghana. See, I love my face, yeah, any kunto I love my watch, yeah. down there give me the canzo. So we don't want no one, no one, no one, no one in Ghana. All we need is peace, yeah, I hate in Ghana. In collaboration with Parables, the song tells the story of a calm Ghana. Getting the whole Ghana to sing this song will get the atmosphere flooded up with love. Mm. And I think if you love somebody, you wouldn't harm the person. No. So if you love somebody, you wouldn't say he won by some other means, so you're going to fight back. Okay. So the whole idea is to get the whole Ghana 
to sing the song so that the atmosphere can be flooded with love. Oh. I love my Ghana, I love my Ghana. So go tell my mama and hey, Nana, I love my Ghana. So go tell my mama and hey, Nana, I love my Ghana. See, I love the Zongos and I love Obango. When I'm in the go slow, ooh, I love a bodo. I'm done here yeah, in Miami. See, they call it coming. Any kind of don't want no war, no war, no war, no war in Ghana. All we need is peace, yeah, I yeah, in Ghana. Ooh, I love my Ghana. With just a couple of weeks the U.S. elections, Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump continues to cause a stare all over. Named the all-seeing Trump, an effigy of him has popped up depicting a very dark future for the United States under the presidency of Donald Trump. That's all in this segment. Have a good evening. And it's a wrap on the news for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back at 10.30 with news tonight. Have a good evening. Good evening.